I'm, I'm Justin, um, located at uh, Dupa Farm in Callington, Cornwall. Um, we've got our own herd of pedigree pigs, um, they're Everred herd of the Oxford Sandy and Blacks. Well, I spent most of my childhood, um, every summer holidays, working on my granddad's farm, which was um, beef, uh, dairy, uh, beef and uh, marable. Um, I think it was just about 470 acres, something like that. Um, my childhood always was with farming and outdoor work and the outdoor environment. And, and from there, I sort of went into gardening and then went on to building. So I've been building for the last 20 years. Um, and then I felt there was still something missing in my heart from my childhood, which was the farming aspect. So I went on to get a couple of pigs in and yeah, never looked back from there really. Because once I got my first load of meat back, I was, yeah, I might have had a tear to my eye when I ate my first sausage because of rearing these pigs on from start to finish. But I put myself through the whole process. So when you put yourself through the process of rearing an animal to slaughter, and then when they've gone to slaughter, like the field's empty, my heart was empty. I didn't have nothing to get up for in the morning to like look after. And, and that's what led me to keep going with it. And from there, you just, yeah, you just can't stop. Well, we, we're based here, um, luckily on Dupa Farm, and we've got 0.7 of an acre of which we, we raise um, four breeding sows and one pedigree boar on. Um, obviously two of the, bre the breeding sows are pedigree Oxford Sandy and Blacks, as long with the pedigree boar, which is a Oxford Sandy and Black. Um, then also we've got another two breeding sows, which are a Tamworth Cross Oxford Sandy and Black, which gives you a better meat pig for the hybrid Vigor. Um, and I'm just trying to establish some sort of more pasture and like luscious grass above the ground to stop the pigs digging below the ground. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to visit, well, view the pigs from out through my kitchen window. So of an evening, I'll sit there quite happily just observing their behaviours on the on the grass mixes that we have been put, putting down from like the Cotswold Tea Company. Um, currently, we're using the pig rooting mix along with a herbal lay mix um, in some paddocks. And then this one that we're standing in, we are using the pig rooting mix with a fast and vast mix, um, which I find you get, once the pigs have eaten it down, you, you get better growth rates. And obviously you get a more a blanket of clover beneath the pig rooting mix, which obviously holds the moisture within the ground to allow it to jump back up again in the dry summer months. Initially, I decided, like obviously looking out the window and seeing the destruction that pigs were doing to the small acreage that we've got here, and obviously with the demand of meat, I wanted to increase the number of pigs which we kept on the ground. But in order to do that, I wanted to um, like provide and have enough regenerative, re regenerative growth for the pigs to happily graze on. And obviously I don't want to be sat there looking out the window and seeing a field of mud. Um, due to the support that we've had from local customers and buying our produce, um, it's yeah, we've had to keep up with the growth rate and currently looking for more land to sow this lovely root and mix on really, just so we can keep going with the flavoursome pork that we've got. Well, these, basically some of these paddocks that we have um, gone over, some of them I've just chained, har harrowed and overseeded, and then there's other paddocks of which I've rotivated and seeded. It's a very fertile soil, um, pasture soil that's, I, it's been years and years since any crops or anything was grown on this ground, so it's purely been a sheep grazing pasture for probably the last 20 years, I anticipate. Um, the soil structure here is very loamy and it's a good draining soil. Um, so in order to have these crops on it, um, like I haven't had the need of putting down any fertilizer. The pigs naturally are doing it themselves, but obviously some of the the bits in the pig root in mix, um, like the vetch and the clover and stuff like that, it, it will regenerate nitrogen back into the soil. And that's what I was looking for, is something that a sort of crop that will look after itself um, and sustain itself for the pigs. I find that raising pigs on pasture, um, you'll get a more succulent meat. Like, as I, was, as I was growing up as a child, I always remember my pork chops being like grey and horrible and chewy. 
and then since we started rearing our own pork on pasture, um, it just comes back like a, it's like a total red meat. And it was just, it, my perception was always like a white meat. So over the years, I think things have changed in regards to obviously the feed that you give to the, the pigs rather than the swill that they used to give them years ago. And I think that has a massive difference. But I find a lot of, uh, of old farmers that I've known who have come to ask me about my pork, um, they've been put off pork for years. And it's just trying to get people back to eating the pork again once once they realise the quality is there now, rather than it wasn't there years ago. People were sticking to, obviously, lamb and beef. Um, and I found like over the years, pigs sort of died out and they're, they're coming back again. But when they're raised in a natural environment, eating the natural things that are there for them, um, then it just it enhances the flavour twofold, really. It's unbelievable. The quality of the meat you do get from the pasture that it's reared on. Um, you can't just stick to the protein feeds that you can get from other suppliers. Um, I find with a pasture, pasture supplement um, enhances the flavour loads. Um, even the butcher that we take them to locally, um, he, says, he says that some of the pigs that we take down through are the best pigs that he's seen come through. Like They don't put on too much fat. Um, I just think they put on loads of flavour and seeing the pigs roaming around in such long grass, it's nice and cool for them to lie on. They can also graze on it and ha they're happy. That's the way I look at it. When the pigs are in, in these like wild long grass environments, then the happy pig always tastes better. But no normally what I do in a situation like this is I'll keep the pigs grazing on this until they've eaten it down so that you've got about a, a four inch cover of growth. Um, this patch was planted on the 24th of March and as you can see now um, we're halfway through, just over halfway through June and yeah there's some fantastic growth here. Um, I could probably keep a pig on this patch for two months happily um, and then move her off or she would probably, because of the size of the patch, she, she would probably quite happily just graze it gradually all the way around and the growth would come up behind her because of the area. Like you did, I did start like reducing the size of the patches, but then you were finding that you would have to move them like every week or every two weeks. But if I was to move the pigs off, I would allow, depending on the rainfall that we have, I would allow a good two weeks before perhaps moving them back on again, just to allow for a decent amount of growth to come back really. I started following the Oxford Sandy and Black Pig Group and um, with a lot of good advice from Kim, um, who organises the group along with other members of it. Um, but she led me down the route and point, pointed me in the right direction to find the pedigrees that we wanted. Um, so we wanted to bring some of the rarer bloodlines that were almost going extinct, like down to Cornwall and started bringing them up in the systems that I wanted the pigs to move forward with. Um, like, well, I think we took a few pictures one day of like the grass and the pigs in their environment here at Happy Wallow. And yeah, I think since the group was asking questions and saying, well, how do you keep your field so green? And basically I was saying that if there's enough food above the ground, they're not going to be looking beneath the ground. And I've always up upheld, upheld that really to, and like it might be hard work at times and struggling to get the crops to grow depending on the time of the year and the hot weather and the dry, obviously we've had quite a bit of dry period this year. Um, but yeah, I've just kept the going with it, with help from the group. And since talking to them about the pig rooting mix, um, I have gone down other routes of like the herbal lay mixes and stuff like that to mix in with it, just to increase the cover crop that they can graze on really. But base, basically throughout the year, what I do is um, monitor the pigs within their pens and move them around as per, as per when the grass it looks good enough and there's enough cover crop for them um, and that's the basically way we do it that's why we've made everything so flexible using an electric fence system um, so you haven't got the horrible well it's not so horrible but I just find seeing stock fencing it just it's almost like a prison for them at least this way they can see each other and talk clearly through the electric fence um, touch woods we haven't had no issues with it yet um, as long as they're trained that's basically it and yeah it's just having a good a good area to do the rotation on 
to provide them with what they need. Well, I find that with Cotswold Seeds, their the website is such a diverse and interesting, informative um, website, which shows you all the different types of plants within the pig rooting mixes. Um, it shows you all the different sorts of root growth, which you want, for obviously, to help aid the uh, soil microorganisms to help better growth, really. And um, all the staff there are so helpful. You phone up for extra information if you want to make bespoke seed mixes for what you're looking for in your own cover crops and yeah it's just a, a lovely database of knowledge and people that you can trust and the deliveries are, are fantastic never had any issues with any any products that I've ordered from them.